A lot of things about this documentary, I enjoyed it. I recommend everyone see it. But a lot of things actually made me angry. There's no real crime here, but it cost a life. This is, must have crossed your mind so many times over the past 30 or so years of, if this happened now, like no one would even blink an eye. So it's really interesting to see when the screening was happening, 35 and up, they knew the story. They're like, wow. And then the, the, new, the younger generation, what are they mad about? Right. Like what? Right. Are you what are, who, today it's like you know TikTok, you know lip syncing challenge. It's all it, it's not became norm. This is something I took away from watching. Do you think the backlash to Millie Vanilli, which actually started even before you were outed as having not sung on the album, I feel it was rooted in in racism, and if not racism, definitely xenophobia, the making fun of your accents and, and things like all these like sketches on TV, they were, very, you know, it was very mean spirited. Yeah, it was, it, it was mean spirited. And I, I tried to understand, I think that, I don't know, people did what they did back then. Now, nowadays there's more, I don't think you could do that these days. It's like, it's like total opposite. You could never do that. But back then they were like, okay, whatever whatever works for, even if it was in poor taste, but they did it, you know? And um, there was no protection when it came to Robin Fab. We were just yeah. like, there was no protection. So they were able to have fun with it. You know, it was an easy target too. It was easy to make people laugh. And uh, let's face it, people watch TV. So it was easy to make a sketch and like people like, oh, that was funny. It was easy to do that, you know, but we paid a price. As human beings, we paid a price and it was hard to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, that's me. So I remember being at the at a radio stations and I was there and then someone said, one of the DJs said, oh, something just fell out the window. And I was like, so I looked, I was like, really? And then he said, oh, I thought it was Rob. I was like, what? Because Rob had attempted suicide and then they were saying, oh, man, he's trying to like, it, it, it's, it's like a rock star throwing a tantrum. That's when I realized, wow, you guys have no coof, no respect for human beings. We're no longer human beings, we, we, we're a product. You were obviously able to handle it better when all everything fell apart. Rob was the one who was speaking the lie and ended up believing the lie, as opposed to me being more yeah. quiet, not really being outspoken. Of course, I embraced the lie. I was part of it, coming from nothing, wanting to live my dream. I trusted them. Then they manipulated us to get what they wanted. We tasted this life, the pop star life, coming from a background where love was not really prevalent in that home. So, uh, you know, Rob was coming from, you know, he was adopted, was in an orphanage. It didn't go well in the orphanage. So you have someone that is going into this industry broken emotionally trying to fill up this void. Now, pop music, success, fans, fills up that void. I was on the edge. I was lucky that I foresaw what was about to happen, that it was going to stop. That was not forever. So I kind of protected myself. One of the heartbreaking scenes in the film was or when you talk about when you saw um, Rob outside the Viper Room. Was that, that was the last? Yeah, it was, yeah, can it was you tell me about time. that? Yeah, there was one of the last time that I saw him. And, you know, I couldn't have written that. I couldn't. I saw him. And what I saw, I saw his eyes. Because the car passed by and he lit up his eyes. I was like, oh, I know those eyes. Like anywhere in the world, I would recognize his eyes. And that's why I walked over. But the shell of his body didn't look nothing because he was masculine. And they was really skinny, scrawny. And his, his eyes, and you could see he was he was gone. He was an addict that was rolling around, running around on, on, on the floor, trying to, to sit on the curb, trying to recover because he had done way too much, what too much of whatever he was doing. And I tried to bring him back because I was like, okay, I got to bring him. I don't know where he lives because we were not truly talking at this time anymore. So we rang and they took him in. When I came in, I was like, oh, that's a crack house right there. Oh my God. Do you feel any survivor's guilt? Did you feel, you know, that you, that Rob's not here, that you weren't able to save him or, or, you know, that he's not here to see this film and see the story be told, right? I tried forever to save him. I tried until I was told, listen, you got to take care of yourself now. When it comes to addiction, which is a, a sickness, 
you have to do the job. There's nobody can do it for yourself. I thought I could do it for him, you know, but love is all you can give. Give love, help him, say, I'm there for you. Whatever you need, I'll be there. I knew it was going to be really difficult to regain anything, any, any of the credibility, but life is not a sprint. I understood it's a marathon. So finally, you know, the story, the story is being told and it is told in a right way.